Warning. The following video contains some torture sequences. I know some folk, they get squeamish about torture sequences, don't they? Uh, but yeah, there are some depictions of torture in this video. Not too bad, but you know, just thought to give you a warning. Uh, oh, and there's another gruesome bit now, but uh, yeah, it ain't that bad. Uh, oh, hey, hello. Hello. Oh, uh, hey, up, Ravers. Yeah, uh, I'm being held prisoner by the local gangland boss uh, who wants information off me about something or other, but I don't know anything. I don't know why I'm here. Uh, but seeing as I'm here and I've got a bit of time to kill, I thought I'd do an Easter theme review for you with the Long Good Friday. Yeah, it's the Long Good Friday. Uh, and it kicks off with a very funky theme too. Uh, big fan of that music, I like it a lot. And we see a bloke coming off what looks like a boat and going into a car. And he's got with him a suitcase full of pants and socks and a load of reddies. And he pockets some of them for his son. And it's the baddie from Raiders at Lost Ark, Bollock. But then he transfers the suitcase over to some unfaced individual before popping to a pub and eyeing up a young man. He's obviously got an eye for the young lads, this bloke. And then we pop to some farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, and this suitcase full of reddies has been delivered to them. And whilst Bollock is fraternising with the young lad in the pub, they're counting up the money, but there's obviously some discrepancy, because we know Bollock has pocketed some of it, so it ain't all there, is it? But before they can do out about it, some folk come and get him at gunpoint. Whilst the young lad and Bollock's driver also get nabbed by some other blokes. So it's all go at the start of this film, but uh, yeah, I don't know who anybody is, or what's happening really. And next up, we meet a young looking Charlie from Casualty. Looks very young there, doesn't he? Obviously we've seen Charlie over the last 30 or 40 years in Casualty, ain't we? And just left the other day, didn't he? But yeah, he does look young here. Uh, anyway, this woman who has obviously been to a funeral, gets out of a car, and gobs in his face! Right in his face! Wait a minute! I bet he wishes he had some of his nursing PPE on, doesn't he? Yeah. But we then pop to the airport, where we meet Arrow Shand, played by Bob Hoskins. And we get that funky music again. Looks very tough and uncompromising here, Bob Hoskins, doesn't he? And the music helps him look tough and uncompromising. Now, Harold Shand is a London gangster, but he's trying to go legit. He's trying to do some property deal with some Americans. And he's got the local councillor in his pocket to know. Hey, it's a good name for a cockney, Harold Shand, I reckon. Sounds like cockney rhyming slang, Harold Shand. Uh, just off for a quick Harold. I don't know what it means, but... Harold Shand. Just doing Harold Shand. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it could be Cockney Rhyming slang, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, any road. Yeah, he wants to go legit, but suddenly everything starts going tits up. <laughs> Turns out Bollock uh, was his mate Colin, and he gets bumped off after ogling a young Pierce Brosnan in a swimming bath. Hey, you can see why I caught his eye. Good looking fella there, Brosnan, ain't he? But, uh, Appearances can be deceiving. And also, there's loads of bomb attacks on some of Shan's properties and businesses. Now, Shand, his right-hand man, Jeff, Charlie from Casualty, uh, and his missus, Victoria, played by Dame Ellen Mirren, they try and calm the American investors' nerves. But these American investors' mafia... Uh, so they ain't daft, they know something's, something's off. Two bombs, that affects everyone. And Shand realises he's got to get to the bottom of this, otherwise he's going to lose these investors. So he starts doing the rounds of his criminal contacts, hoping that somebody will talk, because he does like folk to talk. It's good to talk. And he pays a visit to this chat. Oh, lewd themes! Lewd themes! Crikey, forgot about that at the start. Blimmin' it, crikey. Glad I managed to get that sorted quickly. Oof, that were a, that were a close escape. Nearly got a flash of boob. 
Uh, yeah, he pays a visit to this chap and he gets his henchmen to brutally torture him whilst he stood there in the net. And he doesn't know how, he doesn't know anything. Seems very harsh, that. But Shan doesn't give monkeys, really. And now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, that face looks familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, right. It's a British film, this. British film, loads of familiar faces. So it's time for a brand new feature. What British comedy shows have they been in? Right, first up then, this poor bloke getting his buttocks shredded. That's Denzel from Only Fools and Horses. The young chap who caught the eye of Bollock, that's a bloke called Kevin McNally, who's turned up in loads of comedy things over the years. But uh, more recently, he, he were Hancock. They redid some Hancocks, and he played the role of Hancock. Hey, if you're ever doing a quiz, and they ask the question, name a celebrity with a body part in the name, then, well, you get four with Tony Hancock, don't you? So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, this bloke... Uh, he's all, he turns up in loads of stuff. Uh, he always seems to be some sort of official character, like a, a food inspector or something. Well, he was in an episode of Our Feeds Aim Pet as some customs bloke. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's seen him with loads of stuff. That bloke on the far right, he, he's the chef of Faulty Tars. Uh, Terry, yeah. This bloke, he's turned up as a, a cockney geezer in loads of stuff. He was in an half sitcom called Roman and Jones in the 70s. But younger ravers amongst you will remember him as being the boxing promoter on Alan Partridge. And this fella, that's Jacko off uh, Brush Strokes. I used to enjoy Brush Strokes, it were good. They were very good as the Jack the Lad character, weren't they? Carl Alman, very good. Although I don't think you could get away with that baby these days. You couldn't nick a, a young girl's crisps, could you? You'd get, uh, you'd get slapped. And he wrote, Shand is losing patience, and he's still no closer to finding out who's got a tin for him. Despite rounding up seemingly every possible criminal contact where he knows, in the hope that somebody will talk. It's good to talk. And intimidating him by stringing him upside down in an abattoir. Not very hospitable. And after all his inquiries that lead to dead ends, Harold finally finds out, courtesy of a copper he's got on payroll, that it's the IRA. For Christ's sake, Harold, they're not just gangsters. They run half of London Derry on terror. Could be London next. Oh, no. I run London. Not now, Harold. They're taking it away from you. And then to compound matters, I can't remember exactly how, but it transpires that Jeff has stitched him up and Harold does not take kindly to get him betrayed and he responds with fury. Oh, dear, Jeffrey. Oh, that don't look good, does it? No, yeah, you could do with some of Charlie's nursing skills there, couldn't you? But, uh, hey ho. Now, obviously, that anger, his rage there, is just one trait what uh, Harold Chander's got, which isn't very appealing. But, yeah, he's, he's a bit horrible throughout the film. He doesn't show any remorse after his wrongfully tortured folk, you know. And he comes across as a bit of a racist and all. This used to be a nice street, this. Decent families. No scum. And it's Victoria who seems to be the brains behind the operation. She seems much sharper than he does. And he arranges a meeting with the IRA, seemingly to try and calm things down and get things under control again. And he offers them 60 arrows. 60 arrows, Sean. 60 grand. 60 grand. Uh, yeah. And you think, oh yeah, they're going to go for it and sort of call it a ceasefire, you know. But then no! It blows them to smithereens! Obviously not interested in negotiating at all. You know, he wants to be in complete control of his London manor. Don't you just love being in control? But unfortunately for Harold, his American investors are having none of it. They've seen enough, and all this chaos has scared them off. Harold, this is like a bad night in Vietnam. And Harold ain't impressed that they've let him down. We're in the common market now. My new deal is with Europe. Eh, sorry to disappoint you, mate, but I've got some news for you there. So, frustrated after the Yank investors lay him down, Shand gets back in his chauffeur-driven car. But, oh, no! Where's his chauffeur? Where's Ellen Mirren? Oh, no, there she is! It's the IRA! And Brozza pops his head up from behind the seat. And as the theme tune kicks in again, it's the IRA's turn to be tough and uncompromising. (laughs) 
Now, I reckon this bit at the end of the film is Bob Hoskins' best bit of acting. It gives us a masterclass where he just uses facial expressions to convey the realisation of his impending fate. Yeah, sometimes it's good not to talk. Okie do on two raise ratings. Well, I did a lot of good things about this. Yeah, it's a British gangster film. So I were hoping it would be at least a three star film. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it were good. Lots of familiar faces in there. You will be playing What Have They Been In when you watch this. And needless to say, Ellen Mirren and Bob Hoskins are very, very good in this. So I'm rating The Long Good Friday. A three-star, three-star film. Gosh, bloody freezing in there. It, oh, who's that? I'm going to get rescued. Oh, Ike Ray, am I pleased to see you? Don't give me that rain, Mondo. I'm here to get information out of you. What, what information? I don't know out. Come on, Ray Mondo. Yes, you do. What? Come on. Hey. Don't force me into a position no. where I have to become tough and uncompromising, will you? I, I, honest, I don't know how to curry. I don't know anything. Right, that's it. No! Oh, no! Oh, yeah, I warned you! Oh, I warned you! Oh, 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 no, cut it out, will you? Oh, Any information? <laughs> oh, give over! Oh, no! Well, hope you enjoyed my review of the Long Good Friday Ravers. Uh, and if you did, poke the old lightning button for me. Give it a good old poke. Uh, maybe if you've got a, a tickling stick. Like a cool ray, you could poke it with a poker. <laughs> over, fella. Oh, come on, give us a break. Uh, yeah, uh, and remember to share ray reviews with your mates and subscribe if you ain't already a scriber. Much appreciated. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, much appreciated. As are all the comments you lot keep popping on. Apologies if I don't get around to responding to them all, but I really do appreciate it. They're very kind. Uh, keep them coming. Yeah, thank you for them. And copyright boss permitted. <laughs> Okay, I'll be back with another review for you very soon. Oh, yeah. Give us a break, will you? <laughs> oh, I'll see you next time. Okie okay, do. Oh, cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs>